What's up all the beautiful people of the whole entire world? Today we're talking X-Men. Yeah, we're ranking all the X-Men movies in their franchise, including Deadpool, including Logan. Of course, we're doing this because Deadpool 2 comes out this weekend. If you guys didn't see my review, I really enjoyed that film. And I'm excited to talk about the X-Men franchise because I think this film franchise is kind of underrated. They really only have two really bad films in this whole franchise. Besides that, this list was really hard to make. So besides that, let's get straight into this. I'm excited to talk about the X-Men franchise. But of course, guys, make sure to comment down below and tell me what your guys' ranking would be of the X-Men franchise. I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are. And of course, if you're new, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because I do tons of rankings and other movie reviews. So... Let's get straight into it. Coming down all the way to the bottom at number 11 is going to be X-Men Origins Wolverine. Now, the thing about this film is this film's trash. There's so much studio meddling that we hear about from Gavin Hood. There's tons of issues with the CGI and tons of character issues, especially with Wade Wilson Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds, he was a great addition to it, but overall he was just... Ugh, like, what did you do to the character? The other thing that's bad about this film, though, is just all the integrations that, oh, we're going to spin these off, we're going to spin this film off, we're going to spin this character off, and it doesn't work. I will say I did enjoy the character of Gambit. I think we could have used a little bit more of him, but I think the big standout of this whole entire film that really saves it isn't just Hugh Jackman's performance as Wolverine, because he's always great, but is Leif Schreiber as Victor Creed, as and Sabretooth, if you want to call him that. I, I think even though the meddling with the kind of comic book alterations of Sabretooth are a little bit weird, I, I love what the, the character dynamics between these two. I would have loved to have seen Leif Schreiber later down the road. He is a fantastic actor. Coming in at number 10 is going to be X-Men The Last Stand. Now, this film is just boring. To be honest, it's just boring and bland. It just feels like another generic X-Men film that does a lot of different situations that you don't need. The way that certain characters die in here are out of this world dumb. Um, the direction that Brad Ratner de decided to take with this film just didn't work overall for the whole tone. And coming off X-Men 2, which is one of the best X-Men films and even one of the best comic book films of all time, it's tough. It's tough to live up to that, but I feel like you took a generic direction that really just doesn't work. You bring a lot of cool characters, which is one of the big side of this film and you start to introduce the dark phoenix storyline which was even cooler but it just never came to fruition it just died on arrival like seriously this film just died on arrival and it just it, i i never enjoy the x-men the last stand i will say it's a tad a bit above x-men origins wolverine but those two go back and back with which one's the worst x-men film coming in at number nine is going to be x-men apocalypse now here's my thing about x-men apocalypse i love the character of apocalypse I mean, the fact that they got such a fantastic actor to play Apocalypse got me excited. But in the end of the day, Apocalypse just turned out to be a one-note villain. I thought he had some cool powers. I think there was cool things to him in general. But I didn't think that Oscar Isaac got the material that the guy deserved to play Apocalypse. But I will say I did enjoy the film overall. It's just a very bland film coming off of Days of Future Past and First Class. It's hard to hit that third one when the first two were so damn good. Just like the original tr trilogy was, it's hard to beat that. And Apocalypse, like I said, it's not a bad film. It just kind of seems bland at times. All the action sequences are great. The new additions of Cyclops was cool. The new Cyclops was cool. Uh, Jean Grey was great. I loved all the new actors we got in here. Quicksilver gets another one of his badass scenes. And of course, we get another Berserker Wolverine kind of just tying into that Logan storyline that we get in Logan. You know, we get a little bit, tad bit of what that R-rated feel is going to be. And I love that. There, there's some things in here that are a little bit on the nose and don't really work. But I think Magneto and Xavier really saved this film. And I think really Magneto's storyline i mean the beginning of this film is uh, the emotional punch it brings is like something from up like you bring this all this emotion in the beginning and then it's just like there's no emotion through the end like nothing can ever top that emotional arc coming in at number eight is going to be the original x-men film now the reason this is number eight is because i feel like every film above this is great it, it's either great or amazing and the thing about this film is it's this never stuck with me i think there's some cool action sequences in here it is a great introduction to the world it's a great introduction to magneto and xavier too i mean you look at magneto and the thing that's so great about this villain is that you kind of can understand his side actually not even kind of you can understand this guy's side and it's it's hard to not be like hey i could easily join this dude's side and that's awesome coming in at number seven is gonna be the wolverine i think this film's very underrated i i totally get the third act issues i think viper is a shitty villain if that's even her name but whatever the viper snake bitch is she just bleh d didn't need her in this film but the wolverine i i loved what 
Hugh Jackman brought to this film. I think it was a more gritty Wolverine that we've been wanting to see. If you've seen the unrated edition that's on the Blu-ray, if you haven't yet, go check it out. It is more bloody. It is more gory. You get more of those feels of what Logan turns out to be. And it's great because this trilogy of Wolverine films just got better and better. It went from shit to good to amazing. And that's a little bit spoilers for the rankings above this. But seriously, The Wolverine's a great film. It has some fantastic action sequences. Puts our hero into a different kind of predicament that we never thought we would ever see him in. But brings him to Samurai's. Brings him into Japan, which is something unique and something we haven't seen in a lot of comic book films. And I mean that train sequence is jaw-dropping. Love the train sequence. Love the action sequences in here. And I overall really enjoy the Wolverine. Coming in at number six is going to be X-Men 2 United. This film changed comic book movies. I, I think this is the film that a lot of people watched it and are like, yep, we can take a superhero movie series. Yes, we were getting Spider-Man. Yes, the first X-Men film came out. But I think this is the, really the first film that was like, yep, mainstream people will love it. I think you even put out that comic book movies are not for nerds. It's for everyone. The scenes with Nightcrawler are like the biggest standouts for me in this whole film. The film, the sequences with Wolverine are great. It's one of the first times we get to see him go berserker style. And just overall, you top the first X-Men film in every single way that it makes the first one not even memorable anymore because the second one is so damn good. If you have never seen X-Men 2, go and check it out. Coming in at number 5 is going to be X-Men Days of Future Past. Now for me, I actually find this film to be a little overrated. Don't get me wrong, still a fantastic film, still a great movie in fact. But for me, it's just never been one of my favorite X-Men films. I think there are some brilliant sequences in here. The storytelling in here is wonderful. It, 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 Brian Singer, like, surpassed my mind with how good the storytelling was in here. And even though it retconned a lot of the other X-Men films, it was for the better. Because you needed to. Some of those X-Men films, Last Stand and Wolverine Origins, really ruined a lot of this retconning and everything. You thought, like, the Fox might be trying to fix the continuity. Sometimes the continuity is still a little shitty. But Days of Future Past is something special. It, it, it's something unique that we've never seen in a comic book film before. Bringing two generations of heroes together, it, 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 it's so special. And like I said, I, I don't think there's a lot of memorable action sequences in particular here i think there there's really good ones but for me this film stands out because of the story that it is telling with the characters and the emotion it's bringing and plus tell me this is the first time we've ever got bishop and i love bishop i i hope that somehow when they make an x-force film he's somehow a part of it i would love to see more bishop i think he deserves his own solo film his powers his character all that's great kitty prides in here brings back really everyone into the x-men franchise and it is such a wonderful film i can't imagine the first time i watched this film i remember i ditched school to go see this opening day and it just it, it opened my mind coming in at number four is gonna be deadpool 2 i really love this film not gonna lie like i love this film the more i've sat on this film the second time seeing it i i, I really come to the conclusion i love this film there's so many things i love about this film that i think are better than the first one but for me the thing that's so different that that falls at number four for me even under the first deadpool film is I, I feel like Deadpool 2, it's just the story never clicks with me. I like the story, but I think I love the romantic love story that we get in the first one. I, I loved it. Like, it, it's just something that really hit me emotionally in, in a different kind of way. And it was just special. It's unique. And, and I just adored every single part of Deadpool. But seriously, Deadpool 2, don't take it away. It's funnier. It's more crass than the first one, but it's, it's way funnier than the first one. The action sequences are brutal, gut-punching, and John Wick type of style that I love. Cable is a great standout. Domino is the big breakout star of this film. All the other little tidbits of footing X-Force in here aren't like shoved in your face. They're just perfectly put in there. And for one of the best sequences in the film, Peter... I loved Peter, and overall, the film just brings what you love about Deadpool, it brings more of what you loved about him, bringing his supporting cast, Colossus, Negasonic, Teenage Warhead, Blind Al, and of course, Ryan Reynolds himself, Deadpool. It's a perfect alteration to say for our sequel. It goes bigger and bolder in a lot of different ways, and even though the story doesn't particularly work for me, and I think there could have been some more in there, the emotional arc that they bring with Wade Wilson in this film is something special, and it just hooks you tight and never lets you go. Plus, though, Pinder's like a 
fucking huge standout in this film to me. He has great moments. Coming in at number three is going to be X-Men First Class. My favorite X-Men film of all the X-Men standalone things. Uh, yeah, First Class is the film that actually made me love the franchise of X-Men. I remember after The Last Stand and X-Men Origins Wolverine, I was really sour on the franchise. I did not want to see I didn't even go see First Class in theaters. And I think that was for a lot of people. I think that's the lowest uh, budgeted film. I think that's... not. It didn't make any money, really. It, it did enough to make a sequel, but I think a lot of people were really sour on the film. Of course, Matthew Vaughn comes in to direct it. And even at the time, I hadn't seen Kick-Ass yet, but... The thing about First Class is, I remember we rented it, or we rented Kick-Ass, and I loved Kick-Ass, and then I was like, oh, you know, like, Days of Future Past coming out, like, next year, uh, maybe I should check out First Class. Checked out First Class, wow, what a jaw-dropping film. Again, nothing particularly stylish with the action. The action wasn't, like, memorable. But the thing that is memorable about this film is the storytelling again. The storytelling hits you in so many ways. Bringing in McAvoy and Fassbender to take on these two fantastic characters is great. One of the best cameos of all time with Wolverine in here saying, fuck off. Mystique, Jennifer Lawrence was a great casting addition as well. Hank McCoy, I loved what they did with Hank in here. I think his The Beast is great. Kevin Bacon is one of the best villains in the X-Men franchise. This film just did everything right. This is a near-perfect film. The action sequences are top-notch. The story is fantastic. And even though, like I said, the action sequences are top-notch, I don't think they're really memorable, but it's that story that really grips you and tights you with this friendship between Magneto and Xavier and seeing where they started. It's something special. And if you've never seen First Class, go give it a shot. Coming in at number two, this is the hardest decision I think I've ever had to make on a ranking list so far. And even though this film is in my top 10 of all time, I think it's one of the most entertaining films of all time, one of the most energetic films of all time. I put it at number two because our number one is very special. But our number two is Deadpool. I love Deadpool. I've said it in my reviews. I've said it's a near masterpiece for me. I think it's one of the most entertaining films possible. I think it's one of the, one of the most rewatchable films possible. It, it carries such a sense of charm and freshness that I've never seen before. And I think that's why I loved it so much. And it's still fresh to me every time I watch it. The, the sensation I got watching Deadpool for the first time was so fresh. So such a different take that I've never had before. And it was so different that I don't think I've ever had watching a film before. And I think that's why Deadpool 2, I didn't get that same fresh take. And I think that's why I still love the first one more. But still, Deadpool, it's a love story. Vanessa and Wade Wilson's love story works so great on here. The chemistry, you believe in it. It's one of the only few love stories that I actually do believe in into a comic book film. And Deadpool, great action sequences, fantastic humor, great supporting characters, great Easter eggs, and overall just a fantastic time at the movies. But coming in at number one, I'd be an idiot if I didn't put this at number one, and it is Logan. Logan is the best film in the X-Men franchise. This is a masterpiece of a film. I would even go as far to say this is probably in the top three best superhero films ever made. You can even make an argument that this is the best superhero film ever made. Wow, that's a big statement, I know. Seriously, everything from the direction, the writing, which was nominated for an Oscar, and even going from the performances in here. Patrick Stewart gives his best performance of his career. I don't think he'll ever exceed what he does as Xavier or even in general in any other character he plays. Being X-23 is fantastic. This little girl is going to be a star in the making. She stole a lot of the scenes in this film. Not just because of her action, but also the acting in here. And of course, Hugh Jackman gets to bring the Wolverine character we've been wanting to see for years. The Berserker style, the R-rating style, all helps to this. But the thing about Logan that's so special that adds to this Wolverine character is it's the emotional arc this character goes on. It, the ending, the story that comes about, it, it's just so special. I, I don't know what else I can say. It has some of the best action sequences I've seen in any comic book film, one of the best stories, character development, and just a journey. And the thing that's so great about Logan is you don't have to see any of the other films. If you see them, it adds to it. It does. And you know more about the character. But for me, the thing that's so fantastic about this film is it doesn't need to be seen. It's it, Some people might not even call it a comic book movie. It's its own unique thing, and I love Logan. Guys, that's my ranking of all the X-Men movies in this X-Men universe franchise. All 11 films. And of course, we do have New Mutants and X-Men The Dark Phoenix coming out next year, which I'm excited for, especially New Mutants. That film's like bonkers. I, I want to see it now. But seriously, guys, I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are on my list and what your guys' list would be. Of course, remember, this is my personal list. Everyone's going to have their own opinions. There's so much toxicness in the comment sections and a lot of reviews lately, and I don't want that in this video. If you guys got nothing good to say, don't say it at all. Let's just be 
film fans be nerds and geeks together and let's talk about it so make sure to comment down below guys if you're new here make sure to hit that like and subscribe button this is a safe place to be talking as a geek so i want to hear about it guys and of course if you guys want to talk more geeky stuff go hit up all my social media links the most important thing is go hit up sandwich john films down below because down below sandwich john films actually carries advanced movie screens that you guys can get into and go and see early and also go check out some movie news and movie reviews on there and maybe some other giveaways you guys never know what's going to be showing up on that website so don't miss out go follow them on twitter go check out the website down below that's the most important thing guys of course guys i love all you guys thank you guys so much for all the support can't wait to talk more stuff with you star wars week is next week so make sure to look out for a lot of things if you guys want to wonder my thoughts on solo star wars story go check out my review on that and of course until next time stay classy